Hi there and welcome back. Today we're going to be painting up the High Fleet Typhon colour scheme, but this time I'm going to be using an airbrush rather than my standard dry brushing technique. And hopefully we're going to be able to achieve a much nicer and smoother end result. I had a spare psychophage kicking about and it's quite a large model, so I thought I would use that. I'll be using a Harder and Steinbeck Evolution 2024 airbrush and I'll be listing the paints that we're using as we go. So let's get into it. Firstly, we're going to base coat the model in any white of your choice. I went for Citadel White Scar Rattle Can. And once that's dried, we're then going to want to paint in all of the armour bits on the model and to do that I used Citadel Contrast Paint Black Templar and this may need two coats. And once you've done that the model is ready to begin the airbrushing phase. And we're going to do that by firstly using Citadel Base The Fang Normally I would be using a dry brush here to try and hit all of the edges on the armour. But using the airbrush we should be able to get a much smoother effect. And what we're trying to do here is hit as many of the raised parts in the armour with the airbrush with this dark blue colour. It doesn't matter too much if you're not very accurate here, as we're just kind of making an outline of where the highlights should be. And just make sure you take your time here and go over with multiple passes, if need be, with the airbrush. And we want to make sure that we hit all of the armour plates on the model and this includes all of the plates on the back, the arms and legs, the tail, the chest and also the head. And as I said before, just take your time on this stage and do multiple passes until you're happy that you've built up the highlights in all the areas that you want. Next we're going to be applying the second highlight layer to all of the armour and to do that we're going to be using Citadel Layer Fenrisian Grey. And we're pretty much going to be doing the exact same thing we did in the previous step, only this time we're going to be applying less of a highlight, leaving the previous layer still showing. And again, taking your time making multiple passes until you're happy with all of the highlights that have been applied.
Next up, we're going to be painting all of the legs on the model. And to do that, we're going to be airbrushing on Citadel Contrast Space Wolves Grey. In my previous videos, I used a feathering technique to do this part, but I wanted to try it this time with the airbrush, even though I knew it was going to be a little bit tricky, and I was right, it was very difficult to get all the way round each of the legs without making a bit of a mess of the rest of the model, but I wanted to try it anyway. Um, and I wasn't too disappointed with the nice transition I got, but I would say that in future, if I was to do this again, I would use the feathering technique at this stage over the airbrush. But regardless, if you're using an airbrush or if you're using the feathering technique, what you want to do is bring the paint down to about halfway or the first joint on the leg. And you just want to do the same for all six legs on the model. Next up, we're going to be airbrushing on all of the pink areas on the model. And to do that, we're going to be using Citadel Contrast Volupus Pink. We're first of all going to start off with the kind of large bulbous tail on the model. And we're just going to start spraying this on and we're going to try and cover the top half of this area, leaving the bottom half in the white primer. And we just want to be careful that we don't overspray onto the armour too much. But if we do, we can just touch it up with a little bit of Fenrisian Grey. We're also going to paint up all of the claws using the same method. And we're just being careful again not to get any overspray onto any of the armour pieces. And if you wanted, you could just use the Vilipus Pink straight out of the cup. But I wanted to try it with the airbrush and I found that the control was fairly easy and not too much overspray being caused. I also painted up all of the mouth and tentacles as well. And all in all, I was fairly happy with using the airbrush at this stage. I do think it produces a much nicer and smoother finish than simply brushing on the contrast paint out of the cup. This may not work as well for some of the smaller models, but for the larger models, I think I'll be sticking with the airbrush. And once that's fully dried, we're then going to highlight up all of the claws on the model, and that would be the six claws on the six legs. And to do that, we're going to be using Vallejo Squid Pink. And again, we're going to be using the airbrush here. And we just want to kind of direct the airbrush spray towards the top edge of the claws and bring it down towards the tip. 
and we're going to be leaving the rest of the pink areas on the model alone for now as we'll be highlighting them next in a different colour. Next up is to highlight all of the pink areas on the bulbous tail and on the tentacles on the mouth. And to do that, we're going to be using a 50-50 mix of Volupus Pink and Cadian Flesh Tone. And we're going to start off by highlighting the tail area. And we want to use the airbrush here to highlight only the very top areas of the tail. Be careful not to go overboard here as we do want to leave a lot of the pink area left behind. We just really want to be hitting the top surfaces of all of the tail area here. And we're going to do the exact same thing to all of the tentacles in the mouth. And again, we just want to be hitting all of the top surfaces to provide a nice highlight to the base pink that we already laid down in the previous step. Next up, we're going to be applying a wash to all of the pink areas on the model. And to do that, we're going to be using Citadel Shade Caraborg Crimson. I normally mix this in with glaze medium, one part paint to four parts glaze medium. But in this case, I also added a couple of drops of water as well, as I wanted the mixture to be nice and thin so that we don't take away too much from the nice highlights on the model. And as I said, we're just going to apply this to all the pink areas and that's going to help add some nice shade to all of the recesses and also tie in some of the highlights as well. Next, we're going to be highlighting up some of the fleshy areas on the model. And to do that, we're going to be using Citadel Grey Seer. Firstly, we're going to be highlighting the flesh areas on the tail. And we just want to apply a very light dry brush to the flesh areas, trying to leave some of the previous flesh tone behind. And we just want to hit the very top surfaces and the raised edges here. And we're also going to highlight the tentacles on the mouth as well. 
And we're going to do the same thing here. We're just going to try and hit the very top surfaces. And we also want to hit the very tips of each one of the tentacles as well. Next up, I am going to go in with a fairly heavy dry brush of Finrisian Grey to all of the armour parts. I'm doing this just to try and reinforce the highlights that we applied earlier on with the airbrush and trying to catch any of the edges that the airbrush missed. This is an optional step, but I did want to make sure that all of the edges on the armour had a nice light highlight. Performing this step now also helps as I don't need to go back in and touch up any mist sprays that I made with the Volupus Pink when I was spraying in the tail and some of the pink got onto the armour parts. I'm next going to paint up all of the bones on the chest of the model and to do that I'm going to be using a 1 to 4 ratio mix of Nagaroth Night and Glaze Medium and once that's dried I'm going to apply a second coat as well. Next up is to paint up all of the flames on the top of the model and to do that I'm going to be using Vallejo Express Mystic Blue and we're just going to be painting this straight up out of the bottle and we just want to make sure that we get a nice smooth coat on all of the flames on the model. Next up I'm going to be going in and making some touch-ups to all of the grey areas on the legs and to do that I'm going to be using Citadel Grey Sear. And we just want to make sure that we touch up any of the areas that we oversprayed with the pink or any of the other colours that we were airbrushing. At this stage I also realised that I had unfortunately missed out two of the armour plates on the legs of the model and unfortunately I had to quickly go back in and paint them in with some black templar and then do some quick dry brush highlights with the fang and fenrisian grey just so that we could move on to the next step. And the next step is to paint in all of the teeth in the mouth and all the tentacles on the model. And to do that, I used Vallejo Off-White. 
there are quite possibly hundreds of teeth on the tentacles and inside of the mouth, and you may be tempted to skip painting these, but that would be a mistake. If you do take the time to paint these in, it's really going to help the model pop and just make it look that much better. Then I quickly went in and painted in the eyes, and to do that I used Vallejo Express Nuclear Yellow, and you just want to apply a nice solid coat to the entire eye area. Next up, I'm going to be applying highlights to all of the flames on the top of the model, and to do that I'm going to be using Citadel Fenrisian Grey. We're going to be dry brushing this on, and we just want to make sure we hit all of the raised areas around the flames. Just try not to go too heavy here and blow out the nice mystic blue colour we applied previously. And the last step is to shade the entire model. And to do that, I'm going to be using Scale 75 Shadow Black. And I'm going to be mixing that in one drop of Shadow Black to four drops of Glaze Medium. I'm also going to add in a drop of water as well, as I want this to be nice and thin. And if I need to, I can always apply an additional coat. I'm going to be applying this to every part of the model, apart from the bulbous tail. And the reason for that is I'm already really happy with the color and transition that the airbrush has produced. And I really don't want to mess with it any further. If I do apply additional shading, it could take away from the nice highlights that we've already made. But I do want to apply it to all of the rest of the model, which is going to give some really nice shading in all of the recesses and tie in all of the highlights that we've been working on throughout the model. And once that's dry, the model is done and all that's required is to give the model a quick spray of matte varnish to take away all of the shine that has been produced by all of the washes, and then to base the model. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I did painting it. I really liked using the airbrush to paint the High Fleet Typhon colour scheme. Even though at some points it made the process more difficult, I think in the long run it produces a much smoother finish and a much nicer model in the end. Next time I may try out combining both the dry brushing and the ear brushing to see how that turns out. But for now, I'm really happy with the way the cyclophage has turned out using the airbrush. I try and make these videos to help you guys out, so if there is any questions that you have on how to paint the High Fleet Typhon colour scheme in either the dry brushing technique or the airbrushing technique, then please feel free to leave a comment down below. I'm always happy to help. And if you did find this video useful, I would appreciate it if you could give me a thumbs up down below. But until next time, Happy painting, and I'll see you in the next one.